I wanted to thank the Cervical Spine Research Society for allowing me to present today. Today I'm going to discuss central cord injuries and I'm going to advocate for delayed surgery for this specific patient who is elderly and has a central cord injury. I think it's going to be proven that it's better to wait for the spinal cord to cool down and for us to understand their medical morbidities before we go on. Here's my disclosures, which really shouldn't impact the discussion. So Brian, again, did a really good job uh, looking at this uh, presentation, and he pointed out a couple things. One is patient 73, elderly patient with two systems that we know of affected. He has pulmonary problems and cardiac problems. The good news is he doesn't have a fracture or instability, so there's not a reason to emergently rush him to the operating room. And the other interesting thing is his presentation had an uh, immediate complete quadriplegia, which would be a motor score to zero. And without Jeff Wilson even touching him, he's made a dramatic recovery. In less than 12 hours, he's gained 32 points. So that trajectory is probably going to continue to improve and probably taper off. But by rushing him to surgery, are you going to really accelerate that? And most of these studies have never broken off the patients that are having spontaneous, dramatic improvement to see how that population does. So wait, let the spinal cord cool down, medically maximize, and then operate. So our overview, how we're going to do this. First, we're going to discuss why central cord injuries are a little different. Look at the animal data, the literature. And really what I want you to stop back and think about is it's a race between neurologic recovery and the morbidities and mortality of emergency treatment. So again, low energy hyperextension injuries. This is Bungie's work, which showed central cord injuries are more of a selective neuronal injury than they are a true total spinal cord injury. And what, what nerves do they affect most? The hand, hands. And so we're gonna get into a little bit th uh, about that later. This is Bakash Bose's uh, work, who's a cervical spine research member from uh, Jefferson in 1984, looked at sur uh, surgery for this population and did show that the operative treatment did not worsen the patients. What we saw in the, the Broadell paper is that patients, that surgery is increasing over time, but interestingly in 2010, only 40% of these patients actually went on to surgery. The timing for surgery by looking at the animal, uh, you need to pull out a couple of things and ask yourself, well, does this model really apply to central cord injuries? And the answer is no. Why? because they're not elderly animals. They're not hyperextension injuries. The sur uh, surgeries are controlled and completely planned. So really hard to apply that to this population. How about the literature? The literature is all over the place. I tried to make it a little easier for us. Green means it shows that there's a benefit and we see timing for that was less than two weeks. So even by delaying it, you're still falling into the only really good paper that showed that they're better. better. Yellow was equivocal, and red really showed no improvement and even possibly an injury. But again, these are very heterogeneous papers based on uh, multiple different timing schemes. How about the CNS recommendations and the AANS and neurosurgery? What did their guidelines say? Really, they didn't even approach on this topic because the literature was very sparse. This is a paper we wrote. Uh, nine studies looking at the timing for central cord injuries. And what we found is that, yes, it did advocate some early surgery, but again, early was not well-defined between 24 hours and, and two weeks. So let's look at some of the individual papers. Jim Guest wrote this paper, very well uh, laid out and designed. And what they find out, really they showed no difference with either early or late surgery in terms of neurological. Uh, Larry Marshall wrote what was referred to as a 100-hour paper that showed actually if you operated on him early, you did much worse in terms of neurologic deterioration compared to the delayed group. And he advocated that we actually waited five days before operating on these patients. Uh, this paper is actually probably one of the most referred patient, uh, papers when you're looking at the central cord injuries and probably does bias the whole population in that their results were somewhat uh, somewhat uh, more than all the other papers in terms of their recovery of the central cord injury. This is a chart from Jeff, Willis, Jeff Wilson's uh, AO guidelines paper, which I was fortunate to be a, a part of. Now, Jeff's a, a bright guy, and so he's going to throw a lot of numbers at you and, and convince you with charts. But when you really look at it, there's a couple issues. One is that 
0.053 and 0.051 is not less than 0 0.5, so we can throw that data out. Uh, two, and this is the bigger issue, is that there's a huge selection bias. I was uh, actually one of the surgeons that was recruited for this paper, although my name wasn't on it, and the way we treated these patients was extremely biased, meaning all the patients that got early surgery were the ones that most likely were able to get early surgery. Why? Because they were younger, health, younger or healthy. None of the elderly patients had significant comorbidities. Why? Because guess what? We would have done it more in a delayed manner. So now we go to probably the most influential patient paper was the Staskis paper by Michael uh, Failings. And what this paper looked at was grades of recovery. Now we gotta remember central cord injuries are either Asia C's or Asia D's. Staskis paper, great paper, and showed two to three levels of recovery. Now I talked to you before and I said, central cord injuries never get better because they always have hand weakness when you look at them. So they can't obtain an Asia E status. So you're not gonna go three levels and the Asia C's realistically can't get to be an Asia A, excuse me, an Asia E, meaning perfect. So therefore, it's really hard to apply the Staskis data and literature to this population. And here you go. This kind of shows it with their own numbers, similar results with the early and late patients. So let's go some of the bad things about emergent surgery. Colorectal data, guess what? If you operate urgently, particularly emergently at night, you have a much higher morbidity, 10%. Here's another uh, paper. Elderly do not do well with emergent surgery. Huge patient population, which we never can get in spine surgery, 66,000 patients, and what they find out. Emergent surgery is an independent risk factor for death and post-operative complication. Probably not a good thing, Jeff. How about this one? Elderly patients do not do well with surgery. 23,000 patients looking at four hospitals in, excuse me, 41 hospitals in Michigan. When they did the statistics, 20% greater risk of morbidity or major complications or death if you operate on patients, again, over the age of 75. And that wasn't even really looking at the elderly patient's risk factors in terms of healthy versus not. And in our patient, we know they are unhealthy in terms of their coronary and heart problems. Uh, last paper I'm going to go through, another uh, American College of Surgeons database. Again, huge population, 173,000 patients. And what they say, they showed that the mortality and morbidity were exceptionally high in the urgent or emergent patients and dropped drastically in the elected population. And not only that, but if you go further and looked at readmissions or un un unplanned reoperations, again, elected patients do much better therefore advocating for not rushing these patients to the operating room. So in general, and in summary, patients, a 73 year old gentleman with two morbidities, who's getting better on their own, we should take the guidelines and keep them as guidelines, individualize your care. And in this patient, I would advocate for allowing them to continue to recover, medically maximize them and operate on them when they're stable. Thank you very much.